You know, Teddy, maybe once we move into the new place, wherever that may be, we'll have some kind of consistency in where I film these reaction videos and do whatever, whatever, whatever. But having said that, hello, dear viewers. It's time for another Death Bow reaction. And this one is to uh, basically JoJo's Bizarre Adventure uh, versus Persona. Um, Joker versus Gear. Your no, I, I don't know who this is. I've never watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I just know, I know of it. I've seen a few of the episodes featuring it on, here on Death Battle. But again, uh, sorry for my ignorance and not knowing how to pronounce certain characters' names. But um, I hope you're having a wonderful day so far, dear viewers. I hope you're being kind and wonderful to yourselves. Um, and we're back with another death battle reaction, as I just said. And um, I really kind of enjoy these sort of matchups going into something that, or these characters that I know nothing about. Um, I just know a little bit more about Joker, I guess I could say. I know of him as a character a little bit more than the other guy, Gero, or whatever his name is, um, because... I've seen the Smash Brothers trailer, and uh, what I can say about um, at least these two characters, and the thumbnail is, um, well, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure always seems to have this very interesting art style in its anime and for its manga, and that's a very, um, just the way... The lines are drawn, the characters are sketched out and planned. I think that um, the visual of that style looks very interesting. And Joker from Persona, from the footage I've seen, at least from, again, the Smash Brothers trailer, I, I'm ignorant in this. Um, I think it, he looks sleek. I think the world looks very interesting. Um, looking at some of these the old Smash trailers, like with the... Uh, smash stages or whatever um, I think that those locations look really visually appealing um, maybe once I get into my new place I could possibly get a switch or something and um, try and get into the Persona series would that be something I could uh, I'd probably enjoy dear viewers I don't know I don't really know anything about Persona and apparently this is He's in Persona 5, I believe, so I'm. it'll take me a while to catch up with everything. But um, Death Battle is back, as you know, dear viewers. I did um, Omni-Man versus Bardock last time, and um, I was happy that Omni-Man won, but Bardock did give him a, a, one hell of a fight. And um, again, I'm going into this very ignorant. I don't know anything about either of these characters. Um... But I, I enjoy learning. I love learning about these characters. I love hearing stuff about characters that I don't know. And expanding my horizons, you know. That's what it's all about. That's part of the human experience, you know. You're supposed to learn. You're supposed to adapt. You're supposed to um, uh, whatever, whatever. You're supposed to um, have an open mind and uh, be willing to embrace things and learn about things that you don't necessarily know about and maybe you might not like it but I like learning I like learning about new characters I like learning about new games and franchises because it gives me something to talk about it gives me something to be interested in and given the crap that I've been going through a lot lately I would like something to take my mind off of a lot of said crap so um, whatever suggestions you have dear viewers please let me know um because i don't want to just react to death battle videos or movie trailers if you think of anything that you'd like me to react or check out please let me know but having said all that i think it's about time teddy i think it's about time that we watch this death battle again i know nothing about these characters i don't know who's going to win i don't know how this is going to play out but I'm just interested in seeing what happens.
I'm so happy, by the way, that Death Bell is back. Sponsored by Marvel Snap. I've been playing Marvel, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Stripe Force. And that's my latest sort of addiction. Um, but it's fun, but I don't know what Snap is really about. <laughs> right when I go. This battle is sponsored by Marvel Snap. So it's going to be a 2D animated fight. A sprite Joker fight. Versus Giorno. The Giorno. Of Hearts and JoJo's Golden Gangstar. He's wears nine boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, <coughs> armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <coughs> Ren Amamiya wasn't prepared for this to happen. When he witnessed <coughs> an innocent woman being harassed and stepped in, he had no idea her assailant was one of Japan's most prominent politicians. Poor Ren was forced to leave town, lose friends, and transfer to Shujin Academy. There's definitely more fun ways to ruin your life. But his run-ins with I mean, corrupt he authority did the right figures thing. was only just beginning. One might call it a theme. And it wouldn't just be dealing with your garden variety scumbag gym teachers. Ren and his new friends found themselves in a whole new world. The Murderverse! Ah! Yeah, that one. Derived from the works of Carl Jung, this collective unconscious is like an alternate reality formed from the amalgamated thoughts and feelings of mankind. Second life! Or even what they fear. I am the you. And inside this crazy mental realm, Roblox. those who have been corrupted by power and abused the weak have become evil superpowers, uh, just like how they're viewed by many Ready Player victims One. Victims in the real world, victims like Ren and his friends, Ryuji, An, Makoto, Pancakes, and the animals. They may have <laughs> been helpless against crushing institutional might in the real world, but in the metaverse, they had a way to fight back. Personas. As part of the summoner's inner self, personas can become incredibly powerful spirits. By using their personas to battle their foes in the metaverse and steal their hearts, the source of their moral corruption, Ren and company could cause such foes to repent in the real world. So huh. the friends formed a band called the Phantom Thieves, with Ren as their leader, codenamed Joker. Joker. And Joker's first persona was the awesome Arsene. With razor sharp claws and the ability to curse enemies with dark energy, Arsene was an excellent persona to start with. But Joker's a wild card. Literally, he can capture as many personas as he wants. He's gotta catch them all because they each have their own crazy powers. From shooting fire, ice, and lightning, to dishing out status effects, healing, and resistances, to lobbing actual nukes at the baddies. So Joker Damn. can fight with manifestations of deities like Beelzebub, Odin, and Jesus Christ. Penis wow. monster. He looks way different than in the paintings I've seen. Oh, that is one phallic looking demon. connected to their user's own stamina? So when a persona is shattered, even though it's not like dead dead, it does rattle the user pretty badly. Well, without his personas, Joker can still rely on his guns, grappling hooks, smoke bombs, etc. Might not sound like much compared to summoning actual Satan, but in the metaverse, perception is reality. No, really, yep. it actually works like that. In the real world, Joker's gun is only a prop. <coughs> However, with Joker's reputation in the metaverse, this prop becomes a god killer. As the Phantom Thieves' reputation increased, so did their power, simply because that's how they were perceived. Kind of like how Personas are empowered by the social links Joker possesses with his friends. Yes, in the world of Persona, hanging out with your buds makes you stronger. Anime! Game! At their max, okay. social links can bring a wildcard user back from the brink of death, instilling them with willpower greater than the rest of humanity combined. I guess meticulously gardening your friends like a sociopath has its benefits. Hey, Wiz, have a cold one on me. <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> ah, looks like our relationship meter's maxed out. Oh, yeah. Well, guess there's no point to us hanging out anymore. Later, loser, I'm gonna go do untested pharmaceuticals and date my teacher. <laughs> Wait, date your what? <clears throat> Over the course of his adventures leading I guess the that's something teams, that Joker's happened. bonds made him as powerful as the gods he commands. He can dodge Lucifer's Morning Star, which summons an energy beam that travels several light years in seconds. Millions of times faster than light. Or survive a cheeseburger that exploded big enough to eclipse a nebula. Talk about wow. having stomach problems. 
No wonder Joker can face Big up Bang against Burger. opponents that can reshape all of reality. Valentine's like Mario Day Day who used the metaverse to rewrite all of reality to fit his desires. Or Yaldabaoth, who merged the real world and metaverse together. It was in this battle with Yaldabaoth that Joker upgraded our sin to create Satanile, the biblical angel of vengeance. With a big-ass gun, perceive this reality, bitch! Its primary attack, Sinful Shell, is imbued with what is known as Almighty Energy, which can bypass any defense, even that from the Omnipotent Orb, which can explicitly rewrite reality. Yes, very good. Hmm. Big ass gun whiz. And with a shot heard around the world, Joker and his friends <coughs> proved that you're never too young to change society for the better, no matter how arduous the forces against you may be. If the man is keeping you down, just call up the Phantom <coughs> Thieves to put them in their place. They'll never see it coming. Okay. Didn't really as far back as you could remember, Jonah or Giovanna always feats. wanted to be a gangster. Cause damn it feels good to be a gangster. Gone right. are the days of leaving horse heads in your enemy's bed or God, leaving their head in a vice till they pop. Jorno wanted to be a different kind of gangster. A more progressive, a heterosexual kind of mob boss. A <coughs> gang star. A shy, withdrawn boy on the streets of Naples, Jorno's life changed the day he saved a wounded mobster. In return, he was rewarded with future protection from abuse and isolation. This act of reciprocal kindness convinced Jorno of the value of the mob as a social organization. If only it was commanded by the right person. Someone like Jorno. All he had to do was take control of the Neapolitan Mafia, Passione, 15, and so their army Joker's of technically assassins. Older. Ambitious? Maybe. But hey, he's the bastard son of the insane vampire deuce lord himself, Dio Brando. Who conceived Jorno while possessing the body of his arch enemy, Jonathan Joestar. This technically makes Jorno both a Brando and a Jojo. Hence the name, Jojo. Get it? Well, he didn't just inherit the name, but also the Joestar bloodline's power. <coughs> Jorno possesses a stand, gold experience. Okay, now I see kind of the relation, the connection between the two. Protect their user and come with incredible superpowers, like stopping time, making fiction into reality, or cooking Italian food. God damn, give me that one. And Jorno's gold experience <laughs> has perhaps the greatest potential of any stand in the series. With just a touch, it can imbue inanimate objects with golden light. Energy. Turning them into any plant or animal in an instant and back again. Giorno uses this with maximum creativity, like disguising a gun as a banana so you accidentally blow your own brains out. Wow. The gorilla's worst nightmare. Giorno is, frankly, That's a dark. super genius when it comes to gold experience's ability. Like transforming bullets into flesh to heal the very wounds they made, or changing a brick into a snake that can detect body heat and find a hidden enemy, or turning his teeth into a special kind of jellyfish that filters out the toxins in the piss he was drinking. And Ew. The only one who did that. Should the object Jorno gives life to be a part of a greater whole, like turning a tooth into a fly, it will attempt to return to its original <coughs> source. Not only that, any damage Jorno's creations receive will be reflected onto the <coughs> opponent. Jorno can even imbue living things with this same energy. This supercharges the target's consciousness, causing them to outpace their physical body and leaving them totally helpless to counter attack. It might seem like you got 10 times faster, but you're actually experiencing time at a way slower rate while your body is stuck in the same position. Imagine a Muda to the nuts felt for 20 straight seconds. Forget about it. Especially when you're hitting as hard as Gold Experience. According to the Jojo Veller art book written by the mangaka himself, Gold Experience has a speed rating of A, putting him in the same league as stands like Star Platinum and Silver Chariot, which are faster than light. And although his strength well, I think the other guys... Faster than light several times. Like glass and keep up with ace ring stands like sticky fingers. Perfect for a merciless stand rush that lasts seven pages long. Daddy Dio must be so proud. With gold experience at his side, Giorno joined Passione and rose to challenge its reclusive leader, Diavolo. Wait, 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 wait. Diavolo? You're telling me that Giorno, the son of God, battles the devil, just like Jesus, whose full biblical name is Yeshua or Joshua. Ben Joseph, Joshua Joseph, Jojo. We're moving on. Diavolo's goal was to get his hands on a stand arrow. And when a stand is pierced by a stand arrow, it evolves. So, Joe got it first and transformed Gold Experience into the most broken thing in anime. Gold Experience Requiem. 
Requiem stands change the rules entirely. It's almost like they elevate your stand beyond the need for combat. Gold Experience Requiem can, in short, negate any action taken against it and return it to a state of zero, shifting reality back to square one. Let's say I woke up this morning, got myself a gun, and fired it at Jorno. With Gold Experience Requiem, no matter how accurate I am, the shot will always miss because I never fired my gun. That is return to zero. And also huh. a horrific example of gun safety. This applies <laughs> to any attack made against Requiem, including from Diabolo's stand, King Crimson, which can infamously skip time, erasing the universe <laughs> for 10 seconds. And Requiem hey. negated that. It undid time being erased while time was already erased, <clears throat> which meant there was no time to unerase the erased time. And I... Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, ability that's how I feel. Independently of time itself. Sound crazy? Well, Requiem can counter the stand made in heaven, which can accelerate time across the whole universe into infinity. So that kind of range of Requiem's ability is actually consistent. It also reduces your willpower to zero, so you can't even fight back. Even your death can be returned to zero. After pummeling Diavolo into pulp, Requiem prevented him from dying, forcing him to relive the experience of being killed over and over in a series of never-ending alternate universes. Kind of for like eternity. uh just when you thought Dark you Side were and around, Requiem Thanos. Requiem pulls you back in. The second you hear that piano start <clears> playing. <throat> Run! And so, Giorno took control of Passione and turned it into the peacekeeping social organization he always dreamed about. With its streets free of drugs, Italy's youth could rest easy. Their hopes and dreams could be carried into the future on a golden wind. Vento Oreo! I still think the other Joker might be faster. You gotta play that mobile um, game with all I that think Joker is faster. Oh, are um, talking about Marvel Snap? And I think they're close in terms of uh, combat experience, or like um, in terms of strength. But in terms of overall experience, I don't think that's going to be much of a factor here. I think they've. It's not like one of them is like 400 and the other is like 200. They're both like. They're younger than I am. I'm 32, and uh, they're like half my age, basically. So. Um, I think I don't think experience is going to matter for much here, but I get the relationship between them now. Like they're both summoning personas or stand-ins, or uh, but uh, I, I'm I'm going to root for Joker. Um, I just kind of like the design of Joker and the idea of Joker a little bit more. I don't like the idea of OP characters for the sake of OP characters. So I'm rooting for Joker. And we're already into this. Giorno Giovanna, your heart is twisted. It is ours to take. My dreams are yours to take. Yep. They're already pulling out the time thing. <laughs> I do like it when like one character's reality or world building kind of contradicts with what what uh, someone else's is. All objects given life by gold experience desire to return home. Ooh. His persona creates life. We've got to nullify that. Jack Frost! Ice Justice. This is Requiem. 
like all the different versions of death. <laughs> I've never played Persona, but I get. Giorno never had the makings of a varsity death battle winner. This was an absolutely fascinating matchup and far from an easy call. Joker versus Base Gold experience wasn't close, though. Sure, Giorno's powers threw Joker for a loop, but Joker and his personas were millions of times faster yep. and could take on universe busters. And there was no doubt Joker could see Giorno stand. Considering he could spot similar beings like Shadow. Add in the versatility of Joker's hundreds of personas, and yeah. Joker could get quickly overwhelmed. But that's where Requiem came in, and the game changed. With its ability to nullify <clears throat> any action taken against it, even ones that can affect entire <clears throat> universes, Joker's regular arsenal was rendered moot. Remember, Requiem could act <clears throat> independently of time, so Joker wouldn't be able to avoid Requiem's ability. He'd have to beat it outright. Take when the Phantom Thieves face Mario. Okay. The group couldn't resist the reality warping effects of his powers. He even had an ability that nullified actions against him, similar to Gold Experience Requiem. But Joker still had an ace up his sleeve. While Requiem can reduce your willpower to zero, Joker's social links were able to recharge him. And finally, okay. we have Joker's almighty attacks, <coughs> which could bypass reality warping defenses like the Omnipotent Orb. The perfect yep. counter for Requiem. And this is actually backed up in JoJo. While Requiem only has one appearance in the manga, it did show up in the game Eyes of Heaven. There, it faced off against the world over heaven, which can overwrite reality to overpower any attack, including Requiem's return to zero. That meant an almighty attack that can bypass reality warping would have the same effect, giving okay. Joker the option he needed to land a killing blow against Requiem's perfect defense. Dio is such a dick, he literally ruined his own son's death battle. Jorna was brilliant, <laughs> but Joker had the versatility, experience, and almighty power for the final blow. Jorna missed his golden opportunity and had a shell of a time. <laughs> hey, Wiz, hear what I said? I said... Jorno missed his golden opportunity and he had a shell of a time. The winner is Joker. I guess Next you could say Bon Jorno. Oh, Bowser versus Eggman. This has been one of the most requested death battles. Subscribe and join as a member to see more death battles. So we're finally getting Bowser versus Eggman, and it's not just going to be like a one on one, it's going to be a freaking army versus army fight. So that is going to be something to be looking forward to. But what did you, dear viewers, think? I'm so glad Joker won. Um, like I said, I kind of picked up on the speed advantage, but um, it did throw me through the loop with uh, Requiem, um, this idea that he could just undo everything. So I liked how they had to basically say, well, they just had to find a way for him to override re overwrite reality itself and uh negate those type of abilities and gosh darn it they did it um but one thing i do enjoy in these type of matchups is when um one combatant's like well here's how my world operates how are you able to do like operate your in your bat or your uh how, why is your reality or the way your world functions so different to mine even though they seem so similar like how he had all, all those different personas. Uh, Joker had all these different personas that he could use at once. Um, and that threw uh, Giorno through a loop. And he's like, he can use more than one? Ha what the hell? But I I had a good time with this. I thought I think it was a great fight. Um, there was a little bit of janky animation here and there. But I thought it was very good. But what did you, dear viewers, think? Did you enjoy this matchup? Please let me know. But first, always check out the original content before you see anything of mine. And when you're 
you're done, um, well, now that you are done, please like, share, subscribe, um, do all that great things, turn on the notification whenever I get around to doing something. But I hope you have a wonderful day. Please take care of yourselves. And if you can think of anything I'd, you'd like me to take a look at or watch, please let me know. I'd love to see what you guys have in store. I'd like to see what you guys have. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day and please take care.